step forward. So this essentially is gameplay from a mission we recently did that uh, takes place a little bit further in the game. Um, kind of a Harley Quinn based uh, mission and storyline going on. This is from my perspective, me being Batgirl. Um, Ethan with me is using Tim Drake Robin. Yes, sir. And we're kind of teaming up going through this thing. So the one of the first things I will say that me and Ethan have talked about while we were playing through the game that needs to be said is this is not an Arkham game. Uh, me being a huge fan of the Arkham series, it took me a second to kind of adjust to realizing, hey, this isn't an Arkham game. Like the things we do within this game are similar in style and in vision to what Arkham did, obviously with some of the combat stuff and uh, just the the aesthetic of it. But it is it does have a lot more RPG elements to it. It does have... Uh, just different voice actors in a different feel than the traditional Arkham game. Obviously, that being more based on the animated series stuff with mm-hmm. uh, with Bruce Tim and all those guys. Yes, Ethan, well, if you could like pick one of the more standout things you that stood out to you when you first booted up the game, what would you say that would be? Uh, I probably do say what you said as far as the RPG elements. The game very much is even the fact that there are several different knights. Like, I mean, in the Arkham series, I think all of them potentially it takes place over the course of like one night or maybe like one and a half days or something like that this series can take place over months i'm at day like i think 17 or 18 now in my game uh so after you do several things you go back to the belfry and actually can build new gear you actually get to talk to your teammates about different things that are happening you find more clues it is meant to be taking place over this is more or less like a series as opposed to a movie um so it's that difference was the first thing I noticed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Otis, since you're, do you have any like questions in particular about the game that you want us to have an answer for us? Uh, not necessarily. I'm uh, I'm more so watching to see uh, what to expect from the game. I mean, I, I didn't know that there were as many RPG elements in there, but I mean, I, I think that's just kind of the, the direction that gaming is going as a whole right now, just because uh, pretty much everything has that. Everything's going more RPG, more MMO. They, they want the, the more immersive experience because I think uh, they're seeing that people play those games longer. So I, I think it's mm-hmm. cool to see that introduced into a, uh, a DC thing. I'm just wondering yeah. to see how it exactly it turns out. Like, like right? how much, uh, like, are, are they dropping gear in there? Like, is it like Dust? Well, that it literally just answered my question right there. I'm guessing. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not a looter shooter per se, Dev. Like you know, but but what happens mm-hmm. though, as you're fighting dudes, they will drop stuff, and the thing is, you get those mm-hmm. materials to go back to your place, and uh, either they drop a blueprint so you can craft a new kind of uh, like what, what Dev is wearing now, his back row suit. It's like the third or fourth one. It's not the one that you get started to start off with, um, mm-hmm. and you can build and customize it as you see fit, and then you can also put mods in there. You got to get these different mods, and you can put mods in there that can do different things with your suit too. Um, and also, there's aesthetics or cosmetics, which I know you love, O. So you can actually have it that, like my Robin character that you see right there, I'm actually wearing, it's essentially like a Court of Owls outfit, but on that, I changed, I modified how the gloves looked and how the um, the cowl looked on it. So it's not the standard setup. Um, and then also the, the staff, the actual weapon I have, my bow staff has a fire mod on it. So when I hit cats, it caused them to light up on fire. And I modded it up that much more. So the one I have now is at like 52% elemental effect buildup. So if I hit guys like twice, they catch on fire, basically. It's almost broken. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very much like you, if you take the time to learn the elements of the RPG, uh, it can really work in your favor. Now, it is a bit rough <laughs> with the tutorial on how to do these things. But as you figure it out, it gets a lot more fun. All right. And I, I will say, too, in regards to the your question as far as being like Destiny, it is in a sense, but it, what makes it different from most looter shooters is that it encourages you to build lower level gear because your cosmetics are in sets and you need to pretty much collect each part of that set to have that full uh, transmog, which is pretty much like the skin for it. So even if you have a costume that looks good to you and it's a lower level than what you have now, you're still encouraged to build it and have it in your inventory just so you can unlock that costume later on. So if you don't like the way your gear looks, but it's the gear, like the property setup that you want, you can still get that good looking thing that you wanted, uh, that good looking piece of gear or costume you wanted to put on top of that pretty much. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they do encourage that. It's nothing's really wasted in this. 
Yeah, um, yeah. I wish they would have did in Avengers, got you. Yeah, Avengers, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, I feel like they might have taken a few notes from Avengers as far as like how yeah. they really incorporate the right way to get the cosmetics and stuff on characters without having them having to go through 17, 18 loops, uh, hoops to mm-hmm. get them. Uh, and I will say, like Avengers, one of the better things they took from that game is that they made sure each of these characters feel drastically different from drastically the, different. the rest. Um, drastically different. Like they don't play the same. Like initially, like again, I, I, I think the only other person I played with, and like as far as combat with, is Jason Todd. I went just to kind of see what he was like, and he was it was weird after playing with Batgirl for so long to kind of yeah. adapt to his combos and his style. Um, that's another thing too. We'll get into. We we both talked about in regards to the combat. It. You can get button mashing with it if you want to, but the game incentivizes you no. to make sure you're more uh, precise and calculated in what combos or how you attack a certain person. Because if you like fun. build up momentum by, it's not the free flow combat from Arkham, but it no. does want you to build up momentum through combat by being selective about your combos, and that in turn gives you your momentum abilities back faster. Which in the right hand corner of the screen, it's like kind of like special combos, special moves as well as it also making you do more damage and faster attacks as time goes on, as you're building up that momentum. And the the momentum abilities, as Dale was talking about, can get almost broken, uh, depending on what you do. Mm -hmm. Like for Backer, I use Backer right now. I use Backer very briefly because I love Barbara Gordon, but I use her a little bit. There's a move she has where she will, it's a crowd control where she'll jump in the air and feel like like, I'm like 30 yellow batarangs down to hit the whole group around her. Um, And you can actually take out an entire room with one move using something like that. Um, so it, the game also, but you have to unlock the momentum abilities and where you unlock those is by doing challenges in the game. It's not just by experience points, by playing over and over again. So you actually, actually have to pay attention to the challenges and do those. So again, the game rewards you for being, uh, you know, paying attention to what's going on and doing them properly. And you see Dev right now, as he's doing these combos, you have to, if you hit the square button or the attack button at the right time, each time you hit somebody, it hurts them that much more and it, get, and they, it builds up that much more momentum. So it, yeah. it's a game that rewards you for paying attention to what's going on as opposed to just being um, just kind of bashing your way through it, essentially. Mm-hmm. So this raises a very important question that I have. I, you said mm-hmm. you played a little bit of Jason Todd, right, Charlie? Mm-hmm. Can, can you put silencers on those pistols? Oh, no. Nah. Well, I, I don't know yet. Because, see, there know. are, for each of the weapons that you have, so you have a melee and a ranged attack weapon, and you have gear for each one of those. Mm-hmm. There is one, uh, one of the gear set to say stealth on them and i'm assuming they have stealth elements and with when I, one thing i noticed with him in particular when you switch between his different guns or different range weapons or i think the melee the guns have a different look to them like one looks like a hand cannon versus different types of uh guns so i want to assume that his stealth gun or his stealth weapon is more of a is a silence weapon is what i would assume so i'm Amazing. not I, I don't know for a fact but i would that's that'd be my guess I'm, I'm hoping that he gets a, uh, you know, a, a solid snake type uh, dart gun. I, I mm-hmm. need that in my life. I, I need it. <laughs> um, but if he doesn't, you know, I'll find ways to at least shoot people eventually. Uh, I'll figure right. it out. I'll of just course. make sure it's the last you know. person that's got to be caught to to shoot him. Um, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot people. Uh, that's gonna happen there's Uh, there's a low-hanging chicago fruit joke there that i want to make but i'm not gonna do it (laughs) (laughs) all chicago jokes are low-hanging fruit oh man oh what were you about to say though no i wasn't because Otis said the last one it reminded me of the fact that uh which may happen here but a big part of this game too is you have to the game doesn't just happen you have to put in effort to uncover it so where we are right now you literally we had to literally hunt down criminals in the streets and interrogate the right criminals uh, and groups to get enough information to figure out where we need to go next. So you have to actually scan, <laughs> you have to scan people, figure out who actually has the, who actually is an informant, then beat them up enough, but then not kill them and then actually interrogate them properly. So it's, again, it, it does feel more like a detective because it is a big sprawling city that you're uh, taking, taking on. And it, you have to kind of span the entire city to, to find certain people to do certain things it encourages you just to play it and just get lost more or immersed more in the world, which I enjoy. Gotcha. So you do you you do regular police work, but less people die in the process. Got it. I mean, yeah, that's a very, that's a very low bar, but yes, yeah. extremely low bar. Uh, before we get into the open world aspect, which I do want to get into, I will say the only one of the lacking areas of the game that I feel that doesn't hold up to the Arkham series in a sense, and since again we're going to compare it to that, more people will, is the stealth element. Um, 
in Arkham, there are a million gadgets you have to kind of help you construct the chessboard that's a stealth map in the way you want so you can like maneuver to get it done as fast as you want or even just to play around with enemies and still fear in them. Mm -hmm. The stealth elements of this are kind of bare bones where you have the stealth takedowns and certain characters like I think Tim Drake has an inverted takedown from the Arkham series, but they don't really give you gear to help you maneuver enemies around. Um, like prime example in the in the Arkhamverse, they had the Sonic Batarang, which you could throw to kind of draw attention away from where you are to so maybe turn the enemy around to get a takedown on them. Or you could just even just throw a Batarang in general to kind of deter attention away. In this game, you don't have those gadgets to help you get that advantage. You kind of just have to wait for enemies to get into the position where you can take them out. Mm -hmm. And even then, not every situation that you come across can be handled in stealth. Every situation can be handled being guns uh guns blazing and just fight people but they're like specific setups for uh certain parts of the maps or certain parts of missions that are meant to be stealth and you'll know that because one of the bonuses for that part is to remain undetected so it'll let you know but you can pretty much grasp when it's stealth because enemies will be kind of separated or in an area that has opportunities for you to be hidden behind something versus yeah. them all in one open room in a group where you it's kind of impossible to pick people off one by one mm -hmm. Very yeah, much so, yeah. Question, are there any advantages to, like, you know, coordinated stealth stuff? Like, so you Yeah. Need, uh, Countless. You know, there's three guys that got to be taken down in a short span. And are you uh, being like, okay, Charlie, you jump down on this guy. I'm going to mm -hmm. snatch this guy from behind and we have to quickly take out the third person before he notices. Like, 100%. We, we, we literally did that in this video. Uh, we did it multiple times. Playing it's the one after this one. It's the one after this one. The one after this one. Okay. But yeah, yeah we, yeah, it 100%. So that, that's, that also does bring up the bigger element. The big, single biggest draw to this game should be the actual team element, playing with a friend. Mm -hmm. And you also play with someone, just a random person online too, that's playing the game. Uh, but okay. that's, I, I can't over, over hype or over, over uh, state how important or how much of an impact it has playing with someone else. This mission right here, Otis, this, I've never lied to you, Otis. You're a good man. You're very handsome. Uh, and I died eight times uh, near, near, the end, near the end of this mission is equate I would almost equate it to fighting a boss in a souls boring game that's how hard it was oh. because I came in here under level I came in here at level 8 supposed to be level 10 or higher and I didn't have the proper gear and I was by myself and it was brutal I was ready to punch a, a small wombat I was so angry but when I played it again with dev now you see us we're tearing through it it's, it's, it's a completely different thing so they really really do want you to play in a team aspect they do not lower the amount of enemies because you're by yourself at all it's the same amount of enemies regardless mm -hmm. yeah they, they definitely encourage that um even just to get back into the stealth aspect of it in regards to team coordination although you don't have a lot of gadgets in order to make it easier because each it, essentially what they did with each of these characters they took the batman from the arkham series and split him up into portions and put those portions in each one of these people to where they each like their special abilities or something that he kind of had normally so yeah. for again tim drake is the inverted takedown thing for barbara it's hacking drones and hacking technology and we noticed that while we're going through a mission as a team like him as tim drake he had his advantages me like for the gameplay after this one i think we're going through a uh star labs and they have like drones or cameras around he didn't know that i could hack the cameras so as i'm hacking cameras to where they won't spot him he's going through and he's taking some people down so you can make up for that lack of versatility individually through team play, which is why I feel like we both came to the conclusion they're really incentivizing you to play this game with friends and with other people. Yeah, um, much are. Which, I mean, I hope that we have a lot more team-oriented mission. That's the one thing that I need them not to do that Avengers uh, did not do in regards to bring forth more content that people can play together. You can't, enter, you can't introduce all these team aspects in a team-oriented game and then don't drop content that incentivizes people to play it together. Well, we have to just, you know what I mean? That's the thing that I really want for, which we think is coming because there's a part of the game that we spoke about earlier that whenever I was going through the social aspects of inviting him to my game is a part of it called, it's like hero host or heroic something. Yeah, it's like a it says it's coming soon, which we're guessing it's going to be a four person combat. Because even the first day when it came to like, when you, you know, PlayStation, PlayStation has a thing about people joining a group, it had a, like the max people in the group was four. For yeah. that moment in time, which I think was probably a glitch early on, which they yeah, it was a glitch, but, yeah. But we know that's coming, and uh, at some point in the future, where they're going to have four-person co-op combat, which is the only thing I really want. That was the biggest thing I wanted out of this game to have it to where me, you, Stan, and Ethan could play this thing together. 
yeah and that's definitely uh, that's, that's definitely gonna happen it's definitely gonna happen mm-hmm. uh another thing too that Deb was mentioning as far as the gadgets with the stealth you do not have as wide a array of gadgets on one player but overall they are you're playing four different people and you of course get new gear and you get new moves so you, you gotta think about it as um one batman had a whole bunch of things they had a whole massive amount of gadgets and everything you could do but these are four mini batman so all of them combined probably are do have um, all the same things uh, or have as much stuff ultimately as batman did uh, so mm-hmm. that's how they give it that way they're broken up in a sense it right. doesn't incentivize you to play the game like four times or play all four different characters basically and that's another thing i will get into in regards to the replayability this game to me has a lot of replayability because I, again, like I said, when I switched to Jason Todd, I went through like one cut scene. That was a completely different experience between like the voice actors and what the experience was with him versus with Barbara. I'm definitely going to go through and replay this story with each character just to see like how much different uh, things were changed. I think in this mission in particular at the end, there's a portion that was specific to Barbara that uh, Ethan didn't even see. And he pointed out that when he did it with Tim by himself, it was something completely different. Yeah. So you get a different feel by playing through each one of these characters and they paint like throughout the story obviously the big thing is them finding out who's going to take over the mantle of the bat and whoever you're playing with they kind of like the writers paint that person as being the main one so for me they're painting barbara as being like the vocal leader uh she's pretty much like organizing everybody and like taking lead on everything so they're making it seem like she's going to be the next bat or the next main uh knight the dark knight of gotham yeah. So that's that's the dope thing. Everybody gets their just due. Everybody gets their attention, and everything uh, is is really there for you to want to play this game and spend, put time into it. Yeah. Uh, another thing too is because Dev, yeah, you were playing with Batgirl. There are side missions exclusive to that character. Like there are mm-hmm. Batgirl stories that I didn't have at all as Tim, um, and there were things that Tim and Alpha were talking about in the bat in the Belfry that other characters didn't experience at all. Another mm-hmm. thing that's really fun too, De- Otis, is when you can if you're with a partner. I played it. Um, I played it last night with my friend of mine. He's playing Nightwing. You can do group attacks. So he would do something with Nightwing and actually ho- actually hold them. And I would, it would be, he would hit the button for a group attack, and I would come up with Nightwing. And I, he would like, toss uh, the person in the air as Robin. I would I would pull ball up there and hit him even further, and then Nightwing would come down and, and smash him down. So I didn't know that. Yeah, you actually had to. Yeah, you actually had to, yeah, you actually had to like set it up. We had to grab a person or do something to actually initiate it essentially. And once it's done, you can do a team like a co-op move on on people. Um, um, so it's, it's it, it really is a lot of all the different little nuances the game has and what keeps you coming back for more and wanting to play, play it over mm-hmm. again. Now, uh, is all of that story content that you uh, have, like, you know, playing through with each character, is that also co-op or is, that, uh, is there some of it a solo? Like, how does how does that part work? It's a solo story, but you can, like, you can be playing the mission with me co-op, but the cutscene's going to be my cutscene. So yeah. I'll still be there with him as he's going through it. Because essentially... Mm-hmm. We can, if you want us to join, once you join up, you can be together the entire time. Even in the, we, even if you go back to the Belfry or whatnot, you're always, you can always be together. You never had to set up, separate it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get into one of the main things that I think we need to talk about as far as the atmosphere that the game sets and the environment being Gotham. The one, again, I'm going to keep comparing it to the, uh, the Arkham series just because I love that series so much and it meant a lot to me as far as a gamer and a Batman fan or a DC fan. Um, the one thing that this game does that that game didn't do was make the city feel lived in. There were actually civilians around um, and people, even when you're driving the bad cycles, like there are other cars on the road, you have to maneuver around. So you feel like you're in a, a city versus a demilitarized zone of the Arkham series. Right. Even as well going forward, as far as to like have the police that are within the city, they make it a point to let you know that the police department doesn't have a great relationship with the Bat yeah, family anymore now that so. Detective Gordon in this universe is dead and Batman's dead so they really stand office with you and they really want to arrest you but that being the case when they try to attack you you don't get any increased experience points or anything from beating up yeah. cops so you can do it if you want to but the game highly uh wants you to it highly deters you from doing that incentivize you thank you I was looking for the word um from doing that but uh, there's a joke I can insert here, but I feel like that's too low hanging fruit. I'll say that for all. <laughs> oh, it's God. a Chicago joke. Yeah, no. No, it's a cop joke. No, no. I already know, I already know where he's going with it. Um, <laughs> if we say a low hanging fruit joke, it's basically a Chicago joke. That's kind of the. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I will also say on the flip side, one thing that Arkham does really well that this game doesn't do as far as the atmosphere building is the NPCs. 
although there are more NPCs in this game that are kind of around and they're citizens and they say things, it doesn't really build up as much of a world as the Arkham series did. Mm-hmm. Like you could be flying around um, Arkham City and you would hear prisoners talk about like different things within that world, rather it be yeah. Superman or other things, they'd be really specific or they even talk about history between certain characters like Two-Face and somebody else having beef and how that started. You you hear these little things as you're going throughout the map and it's building that atmosphere and world building a lot more. Versus this one, they have snippets like that, but it doesn't really build the world as much. It kind of feels like everything's self-contained in Gotham versus building that universe up that you got there. Which yeah. more so I think is just an issue with the people writing the snippets and lines for the NPCs. Um, yeah, that's, that's, as, yeah. yeah. That's definitely fair. I, I, I'm sorry, but Otis, you guys say something? No, no, I was saying anything. Oh no. Uh, the the other thing too is that the the the, the worlds, like for example, the world of uh, in this game, in the world of Gotham Knights, it's it is much more sprawling and it has a lot more other other people, the other NPCs, as far as not random civilians that are there, but like a, like spoiler, Lucius Fox is is in here, um, mm. and other. Uh, contacts friendly like Renee Montoya other people for you to hit up and contact throughout the city to deal to do things with there are other civilians that want you to help them out with it's not like um, doing uh, fetch quest but as far as actual having challenges that you have to do for these people and essentially in this world and you actually don't have there's lots of things you don't have to do they're all optional uh, I was just dealing with a boss a character in this game uh, I guess we can spoil it who it is it is Clayface Clayface's mission overall is optional completely well, that's, optional that's been spoiled already so he has been spoiled. Yeah, they already shown it. But Clayface is completely optional. But it's a, it's a, it is actually once you get into the story, it's a very, very fun and engaging story. Um, so it kind of feels like the you can take, you can do whatever you want in the city. It's up to you how far you want to get, how far you want to go with it. Essentially. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of any other points on even so I'm getting uh, I'm, I'm downloading some other gameplay now from it. Um, another thing, music. Obviously, from people that watch this show and have watched any videos we have on reviews. Music for me in almost any medium is always a big thing for me if you're including it. I think it helps build the world and build the atmosphere. This game has some decent music. Like they like in certain scenes, they'll have like some, they like a version of I Want Candy or something like that for one of the oh, boss fights. Yeah. yeah, which you wouldn't think it works, but for the setting of where you were and the boss being Harley of who it was, it fit and it worked for that scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It depends. It's, it's, it's probably more of subjective than objective in this part of the of a review. But for me, I really much more enjoyed the Arkham feel of like the original orchestrated composed uh, compositions they had, which like, like they had signature Arkham things that made me feel like, oh, now I'm in an Arkham game. Like this right. is, I mean, I'm in this universe, I'm in this world. And it felt more grandiose. It made you feel more immersed versus yeah. this one kind of having some different IPs to build a mood. It's, it's, it's more like background music when you're doing something versus having a signature thing that yeah. is is signature more uh for like more attention to detail oriented i, which, I agree right I, agree. I think ultimately too what it is that one thing i do appreciate i appreciate and also it's, it's a little heartbreaking is that this game is trying to be it is different it's not this is not arkham this is not batman they made series arkham almost at times felt like an extension of batman they made series because you have kevin mm-hmm. conroy and mark hamill up in there this is like, you know, this is a different era. And they, they literally kill off Batman, you know? So it's like, this is not mm. the same game. It's not the same franchise. You have to accept this is something different. No, 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 that is a huge threat. So they, Batman is dead in this. Like, there's no... We don't know for yeah. sure yet. We haven't I mean, got that far we, in the game we, yet. We, we don't know for sure yet, but they, it's very much like... And so the very beginning of the game, it's like, yeah, here, here you are at his funeral. Uh, it's like, well, okay, so it's pretty... Yeah. If you've watched uh, that animated movie that DC had called Bad Blood, where essentially it was kind mm-hmm. of a similar thing to where Batman disappeared, it's pretty much like that, to where he's gone, but there's still hope that he's around and people are trying to like make up for his absence with the different, which funny enough in that one, it was four people being Batwoman, Damien, Dick, and Luke uh, Luke Wilson, or Luke Fox, mm-hmm. or like the four in that one, but which I'm hoping, that's the one thing I really want on this one that I want them to copy as far as regards, there are two things that I really want them to copy from Avengers, because I know we brought that up a couple times now. It is the DLC characters, I need them to bring in more characters in the Bat family that I really want to see, like uh, Orphan or like Spoiler. I would say Batwoman, but Kate Kane is in the game, and it she doesn't seem... Be, she still can be. She's, the, she's like the new commissioner, and it feels like that I don't think they're going to have her as a character, a playable character going forward. 
unless they do something different with a storyline in the future. But that, as far and, and as well as comic costumes, like I, the the cosmetics in this game are so dope. I can't wait to them to do like they have some costumes that are based on comic stuff, but they're like in Avengers, they'll literally have like their version of a, a pretty accurate comic thing, whether it was the Superior Iron Man costume or a certain run of Black Panther. I'd love for them to implement that in this game where I can have uh, Teen Titans, Red Robin, Robin costume. They have something similar to that here, but they don't have like the best things about that. I feel like that made it dope, which like the wing, the feather wings or like the cross chest stuff. They don't have all that stuff there yet. But I think that was a new 52 Red Robin thing from the Teen Titans. But different stuff like that is something I feel like could really make this game go to the next level. Yeah, 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 that's fair. And I do feel, yeah. you know, it's just a matter of timing. It's matter, I'll say it's just, it's, it's just, this is what, day two of the game being released or day three, it's very, mm -hmm. very useful. So. Right, and it, just if anything, you see all the pros we had about the game on the second day, which I know this game hasn't had really good reviews. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people said this game is mid. A lot of people have had issues with uh, Warner Brothers having uh, pretty much review embargoes essentially on the game to where they'll give out copies of the game for free to people, but they tell them they can't release their reviews on it uh, before like uh, before a certain time of the game being out because they didn't want people's reviews to affect the sales of the game, which I kind of get from a business standpoint. But again, that kind of that kind of to me shows some insecurity in your product that you don't really think your game's gonna be good enough to sell. But all that being said, I and Ethan genuinely think this is a good game, and I would encourage people, especially if you have a group of homies that you play games with, to get this game and play it with the friends. Because yeah. it was a blast, like, playing it with him the whole time. Yeah, it was a fun uh, experience. You definitely answered my last question, because, like, I mean, the, the most popular re uh, review of the game I've seen is the IGN review, when they gave it a five. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like this is a five? First off, I don't fuck with IGN like that, because they are just historically terrible as a reviewing source. They're hella biased, and not at games, movies, everything they do. And it's everything I've seen on IGN that either they hated or liked. I personally, and the vice versa, have like liked that thing in the, the opposite outside of the spectrum that they tried to paint something out to be. I know they gave it a five. I think Game Informer gave it like a seven and some other credible well, credible sources gave it like fives and sixes. And it's been relatively mid to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, that's people that probably played it. They haven't played a lot of the game for one as well as they played it solo, which the game incentivized you to play together. And when you're playing this game together, I think this game was meant to be a co-op game that you play with homies. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and to answer your question, Otis, do I agree with it? No, I I definitely yeah. don't. I think no. it's I think it's a strong eight and a half. I mean, I may have some bias. I, it's fair. I always wanted to play as Tim Drake, really get into it. And I always wanted to play a Batman game with a friend, but mm -hmm. also just the environment. I mean, we didn't even talk about the other villains. I mean, this game... You're getting into the Court of Owls, who's never been in a featured in a Batman game. They're really, I mean, they're not relatively unknown, but they haven't been featured too much in other mediums as, as a comic books recently. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's just it's a fun experience. The story, the actual story, is much more actual story content has been in any of the Arkham games. Um, so it's there are so many pros to this. I feel like the I mean, the, the Arkham games do have, and the one was written by Paul Dini. I mean, and this also mm -hmm. this same company that made Arkham uh, Origins, which had a good story, I thought. But, mm -hmm. but all I'm saying is just that. There are so many pros to this game that I feel like some of the critics are only mm -hmm. looking at the negatives. And it's like, I mean, yeah, there are negatives. Of course there are. There are different things I would I would, I would change, but every game has negatives uh, and every mm -hmm. game has positives. And you should, it's, and I do think we, it's up for us, up to us to choose uh, what we want to play, what we want to experience. And going mm -hmm. off of IGN, IGN, remember, they, they historically gave uh, Last of Us Part Two a 10 out of 10 masterpiece and they gave Cyberpunk when it first dropped a nine out of ten, or nine and a half out of ten, and then they had to recant it because of the whole different PC version and everything. So it's like just trusting what critics say without forming your own opinion on anything uh, may not be the best course of action. And I will I mean, say, oh, go this ahead. Is a, uh, obviously, IGN is a company that's been giving uh, Call of Duty like eights, sevens, and eights for a long time, like, for years. Please, like, come on now. Yeah. So. And I will say the worst, if I had to pick like the worst two things that I don't like about this game, uh, one would be the bugs, which that being said, I've only encountered one bug <laughs> twice, yeah. twice. And it's the same one It's happened very rarely. And even when I encountered that bug, I was still able to continue on with the game. So it's not a game breaking bug. Mm -hmm. So it's two, not literally. Uh, one, the thing I don't like the most is the traversal. And again, I'm comparing it to Arkham again, because again, it's, it has a lot of similar qualities. 
with Arkham, the traversal would rather be like the cape gliding, uh, seeing the cape gliding in that game versus the one with bad girls night and day. Like they have the uh, mechanics of you diving and you like gliding, but you don't have one. All the, the, the one thing, the traversal is very slow and kind of mundane. I feel like with at least the heroic traversal for each of the characters. Um, again, I can't speak for all of them per se yet. I can only speak from what I've seen with Bad Girl, and I can talk a little bit what I've seen with Tim Drake from Ethan. But with the Bad Girl traversal, like that cape is kind of slow. It's fun to use, but you have to like grapple a lot in between to kind of make up ground versus an Arkham. You can like shoot across the city on a glider and like just, you cannot touch the ground if you don't want to. Or I will say- What you mm -hmm. have to factor in though too is that this game does want you to use the the, mo the motorcycles, the bikes, mm -hmm. and the handling and the handling of the bikes is very it's very uh, it's, it's good. It's excellent. It works really well, I think. Mm -hmm. In the uh, Batman games, where you can traverse the entire cities gliding, the uh, for the, the first three there is no Batmobile, and then mm -hmm. once they had the Batmobile in place, they wanted you to use that Batmobile like crazy. So yeah. I feel like this game is trying to be more balanced as far as yeah, you can traverse the city and the, the entire city without having to use the bike, but they do want you to use the bike too. All right. Which is the happy medium there. I, the, my only thing is to speed it up. That'd be the only thing. Like mechanics are solid. The mechanics are good. I just like for the traversal to be faster. Especially with like, I've seen Dick Grayson gameplay of like his glider. He has a mechanical like jet glider. It should move a lot faster than what it does. Like just pick the speed up a little bit. Maybe something they can do in the patch in the future maybe. Um, even like Red Hood's jump, I maybe want, maybe make the jump go a little bit further than what it is. I don't know. And then I, 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 what I thought was going to happen with Tim Drake's teleportation device with the watchtower thing, I assumed it'd be something akin to like Kate Bishop's teleportation from Avengers, but it's more so of a, all right, you zipped up and you're moving your point around where you want to go and then you teleport there. It's not really a quick thing. Every, all the transportation, the heroic transportation is very much slower than what I would prefer and what I'm used to when it comes to traversing an open world. But like you can say, you do have the bike alternative, which you can use. I just like it to be, equal on both where i don't have to use the bike to move really quick around the city i mean you but know, just here asking for them to put in a bike so uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take <laughs> one of the, one of them was you otis east right but the traversal is fun i'll give that it's fun it's not fast but it's fun like i enjoy doing it i enjoy it it's it, like I will, i'm going to break down the gameplay and like put it together in some gameplay footage later it's gonna it's really dope to see like if Ethan's jumping around across rooftops. He sees me flying across somewhere else, and I see him teleporting around. It's cool to see that, and I can only imagine how dope it's going to be with all four people in one thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, and I was, just, we, we, we got to go. We we are we are really long here, but one right. thing I do appreciate is just how like Dev mentioned the bugs, and they really are very very minimal for a opening weekend launch of a big game like this for for two for co op for massive co op for to have essentially no for to have very minimal bugs is very rare these days. Not just, I mean, we always harp on cyberpunk that that, <laughs> that Chicago low hanging fruit that it is, but many games these days do come out with lots of bugs from the jump. This game has, as far as I've seen, very, very, very few bugs. It's been a very enjoyable experience overall. Do you want to go ahead and rate this or rate the game so far from what we've played, Ethan? Sure, sure. Uh, like I said, I, I would go ahead and give it a solid eight and a half. I give it a solid eight and a half. I, I, it was a very, even playing it by myself, and there was a learning curve, obviously, because I had experience with Arkham games, and a game can be very hard if you do not, if you do not pay attention to a how you build your character, a you know b the levels that the game recommends you you would be at before you go to different areas and things like that nature. It can be very very hard, but if you actually take your time, get into the combat, learn what you're doing, take it seriously, it's a very enjoyable experience. I give it eight and a half. Yeah, for me, and this is coming from an Arkham head. Like again, this is like top three franchises of all time for me personally. I I'll give the game an eight and a half to possibly a nine when I play with other characters because I've only played with my one character and got to customize my one character. And even then, I haven't gotten to get to the end game, end yeah, game yeah. stuff that yeah, cool. makes her play a little, a lot more smoother and a lot more cool stuff going on there. Yeah. So, base from like playing it for like 10, 12 hours, I think maybe somewhere around there, it's eight point five to me, which I think has a possibility to be a 10. Yeah. All right. I mean, unfortunately, you guys have convinced me to spend money on the Warner Brothers thing, so I'm, I'm going to shut it <laughs> there. But uh, I'm, I'm, I believe it. I mean, just looking at some of the gameplay that you guys have, it looked pretty fun. And then, like, you know, knowing that it is uh, that, that two-man, army of two type feel, uh, mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate that. So uh, I'll right. definitely be getting as soon as I can. All right. 
again, well, if everybody, if this watching it, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you had different feelings on anything we talked about today, again, leave it in the comments. Let us know what you thought. We appreciate all the feedback. 